slow clean up, guys. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, we have two regrets from trustees. Uh, Trustee Brian Bassoff is on uh, in holidays in Europe, I believe. So he doesn't actually send his regrets. But he is. <laughs> and Trustee Moroni just got called to work tonight, so he's unable to be here. Um, with the agenda, we have uh, one addition under correspondence, which would be 8.5C, and it's a letter we just received from the BC School Trustees Association. And um, so if we can add that to the agenda. Does anybody have any other items to add to the agenda? If not, I have a motion to approve the agenda plan. Over, second by Jack. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. We have the minutes of July 9th. Are there any errors or omissions? If not, a motion to approve. Moved by Jack. Second by Elmer. Discussion. All in favor? Carried. We move on to the superintendent's administration report. Right. Okay. So it's actually an administration report for July 1st to August 21st, which included the highlight of the holidays. Uh, item number was that? Uh, enjoy, enjoying double sleep. 15. During the holiday time. Item number 15. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lo lots of other great stuff going on. I'll highlight a number, and if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer questions. Uh, item number two, just to bring attention once again to the fact that Michael Howarth is, is uh, our new district vice principal of technology. As, uh, he arrived actually early in July, a month early. Uh, has been re very busy during the summer uh, through the school's completed uh, server upgrades and software upgrades. And, and uh, actually all four of our schools. Uh, excited to have him here and he joined us today for the first time with our principals meeting. Uh, item number three, really excited for Mackenzie Millette. Uh, some of you were aware from uh, late June that we had an opportunity, uh, a, a very late opportunity to uh, nominate a student to be involved in the Dalai Lama visit uh, on October 21st. Uh, uh, it was originally an application process put out to the province. It happened right during job action. I got a, a phone call from one of the organizers asking if we were able to nominate. I uh, did some quick nominations and talked to Mackenzie. Uh, he was accepted. In fact, he's been down now to the, uh, he spent the weekend at UBC with a, a group of eight students that are going to meet with the Dalai Lama and facilitate a discussion at John Oliver Secondary on October 21st. Actually, Matt's been selected as the MC uh, coming out of that. So I'm really excited for Matt and I'm not a bit surprised about how, uh, how much they, they loved having him there. A thoughtful and uh, entertaining man. Uh, item number six, uh, was, I was uh, happy to have uh, Ariel McDowell join uh, Kim Schoenhardt, Reichel, and myself at the BC School Superintendents Summer Leadership Conference. Uh, we uh, hosted a presentation uh, on our use, on Columbia Park specifically, his use of the Middle Years Development Instrument and engaging students in, uh, uh, in discussion, and hi which highlighted uh, two videos, actually, as uh, so you, know, you know the kids that were involved in that, of course. Uh, two videos of students responding to their, dis their, their uh, discussions and uh, class activities related to the MDI. Uh, item number seven, I, I just wanted to once again uh, uh, thank everyone involved for in, the, in the homecoming uh, and those that attended the school tours. Actually, we, we started the school tour, Linda Chell uh, toured us through Begbyville Elementary. Started with a group of six, wound up with a group of over 30. Uh, by the time it started, so uh, and and the uh, uh, folks that came enjoyed a tour through both buildings, and then spent the uh, well, half an hour plus in the what we'll call the hallway of memories down in RSS, which turns out to be a really nice spot to have those uh, those uh, class pictures running all the way back to 1936 or 1939. I'm trying to think in there, uh, and actually missing a 1961 photo, and uh, uh, there was a. a a homecomer who said, I think I know where I can find a 1961 photo, so we might, we might have that one uh, uh, come up. Yeah. Item number uh, 11, I, I, just to, to note uh, the, the, uh, the summer work that took place, uh, thanks to, the, to our QP crew and our very small QP crew, uh, Andy Dawes and uh, Earl Whitehurst Direction, along with uh, Laura Tapp and some others that did the work at Columbia Park Elementary to complete their kitchen project, which is going to get well used this year. Number of painting activities, uh, Arrow Heights. Uh, if you haven't driven by there recently, their new uh, playground is, is, is in and just getting the surface finished. Uh, thanks to the parents group that had a huge amount of work put in that and then our, our maintenance crew for finishing the work off along with the rep from Henderson. Uh, bottom of the page, I just wanted to note that, uh, and you, you will have seen in the news already, and thanks to David and others for letting people know that uh, Revelstoke was successful in their uh, uh, request to be an early years test center site. Uh, both Tessa Graham and Jan White from the Provincial Office of the for early years. I uh, visited Yellowstone last week, attended an ECD meeting. We're exceptionally impressed that in the summertime our ECD team came together with a, a full table 
uh, of our uh, community partners. And, uh, and that's going to be an exciting, uh, well, to have an opportunity to have impact us for the next number of years in terms of uh, funding our early years test center. And uh, finally, just wanted to add that, um, uh, and it's not in, not in the report because we, we just we just finished up yesterday and the day before, but uh, brought closure to our QP, uh, our local QP bargaining. Uh, Tammy Sawinski uh, from the OLRC and Harry Knott, who is from the, uh, he's, uh, the QP, QP regional director, uh, was up uh, joining Claire Maltby and Bruce uh, and myself, and uh, and we were able to, in a day and a half, uh, bring closure to all of the local QP uh, contract issues very quite satisfactorily, so that'll, that, that's actually coming up for ratification, but let you know that that's all complete. Yes. Yeah, so any questions or comments? Thanks, Rick. Any questions or comments from trustees? Jeff? I was just wondering, with number one, uh, the and the positions, I was just wondering about the librarian in high school and the experience board papers. Yeah. Both retired. Yeah, so that, that was that was really big. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of the library, uh, Jeff Wilson's taking over in the from Greg Wood in the library. And Jeff Colvin and Aaron Williams together are taking over uh, the, the, the tasks that uh, Lori Millman was doing related to the screens as secondary school friendships. Mm. So, and uh, also, the number seven, the hallway of memories. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Bill Hudson is on trip with me, but I did see him uptown yeah. and told him about all of these places to go. And yeah. He showed up in school again. Mm -hmm. He retired in 85, but uh, anyway, uh, he's responsible for a lot of those kind of photocopies. Yes. Uh, of classes show, showing the class lists. Yeah. And yeah. So, and then he said that. Uh, I mentioned that to him, and he said that the uh, way he uh, did it was that he had a whole bunch of yearbooks for yeah. the that. And uh, Clyde Waldman, who was principal at that time, back in the early 80s, Elmer, I guess, and, uh, he said we had to put history in this field, you know, to ready to even get together to show. And so Bill was a librarian then, and he had brought out his yearbooks and, uh, and all copied them. Mm -hmm. and Excellent. Yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't on the trip, but his name was brought up. Yeah, I think he went on a hike that day. So, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I'll just offer a couple comments. Uh, first, on number 17, we had a meeting with the Early Childhood Development Committee earlier this week, and uh, Tessa Graham and Jan White were there. And um, basically, uh, there was about 50 communities applied for the early years. 12 were selected. Revelstoke was one of the 12 and they actually asked Revelstoke if they would serve as a mentor uh, for the other ones that have been selected because, um, and I give a lot of the credit here to Tracy Spanier who's the coordinator for the, for the Childhood Development Co um, Committee. Did an excellent job with the application. There was a lot of meetings in June, very comprehensive package, and, um, and actually the people that came here end up staying uh, for quite a while to ask questions about how Revelstoke is successful or what they do. So that's, Really good news. I think it's in the neighborhood of a fifty-two thousand uh, dollar project, and um, good news going forward there. Just like to uh, add appreciation to everybody involved in the QP negotiations, which were concluded successfully this week. And just a reminder of how that unfolded: is that QP approached BCPC in May and said that they would like to have an early start to provincial negotiations. The two parties met for uh, five days in Vancouver in June and agreed to a provincial framework. And the highlights of the provincial framework were uh, following the economic stability mandate, which calls for a 5.5% increase over five years, with the potential for a dividend dependent upon provincial economic performance. Uh, the QP also um, uh, had an ex agreed to a standardized benefit plan, and we subsequently met and developed the plan um, for, I think that was around $2.6 million. Also, money for a job evaluation plan, and so after the provincial framework was adopted, then it goes to the uh, local level to sort of negotiate around the edges, and that's what took place on uh, Monday and Tuesday. And this week, and my understanding is that uh, both parties are recommending ratification to their members, so that's that's good news there. The other item I wanted to highlight from Mike's report is just a, a notice about the retirement tea, which is taking place at the Hillcrest Resort tomorrow at 4 p.m. And I'd just like to acknowledge that this year we have a large group of retirees, and I'll just list the ones that are retiring. There's Earl Woodhurst, who keeps trying to retire, um, Vivian Bennington, 
And again, um, I'd like to thank Vivian because she originally wanted to uh, retire earlier in the year, but then she uh, knew that we had some needs that needed to be met, and so she stayed on longer for that. Uh, Laura Phelps, of course, who's um, done outstanding work in kindergarten over her, her career. Um, Lori Milmine, as Jeff has mentioned, from the secondary school, Greg Gutet, um, also from the secondary school. Uh, Brenda Resvick, and I don't think the office is quite the same as I can have, no, Brenda, <laughs> and Luigi Lamachia. So we have um, seven retirees that we're honoring tomorrow, and I think we've got RSVPs from over 80 people, so it should be a very nice event, and it's a, a great way to say thank you to all these people for their career and education. So anything else from your report, Mike? Okay. Jeff, Jeff. Mm -hmm. You say there's a standardized benefit plan for keeping now? Yes. Or was there much variation between the districts and some of the Yes, yes there was. And so it's something, um, if you go back to the 2011-2012 negotiations between BC, PC and BCTF, what came out of that was um, uh, we had a joint committee who uh, worked on developing a standardized benefit um, plan for the BCTF and then districts have the option of opting in or out. And I think to both of our surprise, both BCTF and ourselves, um, most of the districts in the province opted in. They, if they thought they had a superior benefit plan locally, they, could, they didn't have to opt in, but most did. And so we were quite pleased with the work that was done, and that's mainly in the area of extended health. And so QP was very interested in pursuing the same sort of concept. And again, um, in both cases, we did this with the uh, assistance of the consultants in the benefits area, which is Morrill Chappelle, who administered the benefit programs for the school districts. And so basically what we did is um, we had a small subcommittee from both parties. I was I was part of the employer one, and then uh, QP had their um, small subcommittee. We met with Morrill Chappelle uh, for half a day in Vancouver and worked out how we would best spend the money. Then they took that to the membership and they agreed. And so um, it's, there was a lot of variation, but again, once you can get to a standardized plan with the infusion of a little bit of money, you can um, improve uh, benefits by uh, cutting down on administration costs, because every time you have a different plan, you add more costs to it. So it's a, there's a, something that QP saw as a very positive thing coming out of those negotiations, just as the BCTF saw as a very positive thing coming out of the 2012 negotiations. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, Mike, the disposition of the surplus schools update. Okay, you, you'll be familiar with, uh, with the format of this update uh, in terms of timeline. Just a number of things I would highlight that would represent some changes from the last time. Um, uh, we'll, we'll just jump over Big Eddie, it's there once again as a whole. As a whole. Uh, Mountain View, and then uh, just to, to note that uh, up until this point, we had actually had the heritage designation and the heritage revitalization agreement application as one task. Uh, we have separated that uh, so that to ensure that we get the heritage de designation in place and then uh, that basically protects it in the event that somebody else comes along and we are successful in the very near future of selling that site uh, we'll have the heritage designation in place already so that it protects the building that's the intention of pulling that out uh, in in the uh, uh, since we provided you an update, we've had a request for a qualification process. We went through in the summer. That went very well. You'll see there was three uh, demolition uh, contractors selected. Uh, we, this, this basically ensured that the qualification process basically ensured that we were only allowing uh, tenders to come in from contractors that we believed would have the skills and ability to do this work, uh, as opposed to just kind of opening it up to anybody. So there we have Pacific Lasting 3R Demolition and Clearview, Clearview Grinding, Clearview. Clearview was actually the, the uh, demolition team that did uh, both RSS and, and our Big B, uh, Big B, or Big B, sorry, Big B View. <laughs> he certainly, most certainly did not touch Big B View. Um, uh, and, then, and then also, a, 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 finally, a change in the, uh, the, the work that we actually had done. We took a decision just before the qualification, the request for qualification went out, uh, considering the Mountain View site, we had originally had, had, uh, were pursuing a plan that would say we would we would do the whole site at once, the full demolition. That included the the uh, uh, the playing fields with the old Central School Foundation in it, and ensuring that the entire site was looked after in terms of uh, turning it over to a potential developer and looking after all the ground, uh, the, the soil issues that we were going to have to do. Uh, given given the the potential for it, how long that property may sit. We took a decision to deal only with the building itself, uh, other than the 1914 building, to make sure the 1914 building is secure, and that the site uh, around that building 
is, is uh, fully cleaned up with the playing fields, we, we decided not to test right now. Uh, with, in and I think that's probably going to be a very uh, friendly thing to do in terms of the, the, the neighborhood because that, that site would have been a very good dust pile for quite some time. Uh, so until we make further progress in terms of what we want to do long term with it, uh, that the uh, central school piece will stay there. So that maintains in fact the, uh, the playground that's there. Uh, it, it, the playground actually may, may, may be moved, but the playground will stay there, the playground intact for the neighborhood, uh, but the old building will come down, particularly the 1914 building. And then we have had to uh, um, engage MQN and Vicky Topping to ensure that there's a plan to secure that building. It's not so easy as just to knock the building down and put, put a door back on the back side of it again. So there's a fair bit of work to be done. In fact, there's a septic line that runs right underneath that building, so there's some pretty, there's some pretty specific things that need to be detailed when we're looking at preserving that. That piece of that piece of the building. Questions or comments on that? Um, just uh, maybe I'll add a couple of comments, and I apologize for saying this every time, but just uh, to remind everybody that the uh, deal we made with the province of British Columbia was that, in return for the uh, new secondary school, new elementary school, and neighborhood learning, and all the improvements, which totaled fifty-three million dollars, we were responsible for raising two point four million dollars. Um, from the sale of surplus schools to contribute towards that price. So it seemed like a pretty good deal, and still mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's happened since then is that uh, Mike and Ann Cooper uh, went to Victoria to meet with um, uh, ministry officials to uh, inform them of our problems with um, Bigetti. And basically, with Bigetti, because of the water situation, there is a moratorium on development. Um, and that's nothing to do with the school district, it's just simply the, the, the water situation, the beginning and, and development. And so the ministry is uh, sort of putting aside <coughs> the expected money from the Getty and putting that aside knowing that we don't have the ability to sell, sell the lots there. In terms of the Mountain View, we just keep going towards the plan and at some point it will come up to the market as to how those uh, properties do sell. And I completely support the uh, decision to um, leave the old central foundation as is um, in terms of just the neighborhood appearance. I, I know a number of years ago, um, there's part of the foundation that came up through the ground, but I think that was a long time ago and hasn't happened since. Yeah. So it's nice to leave it as the playing field for now until further development takes place. Any other questions or comments on that issue? If not, we'll go to the capital project bylaw mm -hmm. number 126, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, the ministry announces in the spring what our capital bylaw is, uh, or what our uh, annual facility grant is. It's broken into two portions. An annual um, uh, part of it comes through operating, and the other part is funded through bylaw. And this part is a portion that's funded through bylaw. The projects um, were submitted to the ministry prior to the, at the end of school, and they were approved, and we've been moving on them near, nearing completion to move forward. And therefore, I'd ask that. The bylaw be read for a second period of time for we pass in the document. Moved by Elmer, seconded by Jeff. <laughs> it's going to have to be. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And um, Bruce, do you want to just uh, outline a few of the projects that are being done under this uh, annual facility spread? Some of the areas that we're doing, including we're upgrading uh, some of the electrical and wiring connections. What we did is we put a, a bit of an emphasis on the, uh, the two uh, pre-existing schools prior to the main project. And so improve things like wiring and connections there for computers for the electronic uh, equipment. I did some upgrading, upgrading to the playground at Arrow Heights. Mm -hmm. uh, did renovations to and constructed the special ed and life skills kitchen at Columbia Park. And then did some uh, additional work that uh, after the, the folks been in RSS for a while realizing that uh, they wanted to have done to make the school uh, more uh, usable for them, and um, so I think. Oh, and then we of course put some money towards retaining the wall that's outside here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not sure, Mike, if there's anything you want to add. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. That's good. And all those projects are underway or in progress. That's right. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And within budget. Yes. And within budget. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor of the motion. Carried. Thank you. Next, we go to policy 2.15, trustee elections bylaw. Bruce? Okay. Oh, no, it's Mike. That's the name Yeah, well, it's other groups. So let's go, go, go. Yeah, it's Bruce. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jeanette was giving me credit for doing Bruce. I was going to give you credit and try and do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So what happened was there were changes uh, to the Local Government Act and as a result of that, um, the school districts and actually municipalities as well have made changes to their bylaws. So uh, what we did is we used uh, consultation with uh, representatives from the city as well as representatives from ECSTA. We have a, we have a staff lawyer and some input from the board chair. Uh, we revised the bylaw, keeping it very close to what was uh, pre previously existing. So this really means is other than the fact that uh, we are not charging a deposit because the, the city is for all of them and for mayor, we're not. And the fact that the other change, I think, is the order of names in the ballot, I think, might be different than our other than that, we follow their bylaw. And uh, again, uh, both uh, the city representative and the CSP is comfortable that, uh, that we've met the requirements of the changes. The other thing that will happen is the district office will put a link on our web page to the changes for the financing component because there is a requirement that that be up there as well. It's up there already. Yeah. And so, Jeanette, sorry, thank you, Jeanette. Sorry, so, I would ask that this be read for a second, third time, passing through. Motion, please. Move by Jeff, second by Elmer. Discussion? Yes, Elmer? No, no, nowhere on here it states like the term for uh, four years now, I believe, instead of three years. It is four years. It is four years. And that's all in the uh, the local government act as well as in the city bylaw. Mm -hmm. I have a property of the city bylaw here if you want. Just a, a couple of comments on the bylaw. You can see in terms of the, uh, where level six is different than some other areas is that we have uh, five trustees and the electoral areas included in the five. In some, some areas they have more of a, you know, two from this uh, regional district, two from this regional district, but we're five, which includes the regional district. Another comment in number four, which is um, was sort of an interest a few years ago in, um, in the energy areas, they had, um, they're part of the North Oak and Ogden and the Chuswap, uh, board, and they, they had a tie for the end of the area, and what they had to do is draw straws. And so they made both the tie candidates, I think it was 898, 898 or something like that, and they both pulled straws, and then and the, and the, the losing one told his brother about it afterwards, and his brother said, I forgot to vote today. <laughs> so, and then the um, last one that Bruce talked to me about was the nomination deposit, and my suggestion was that with Rebel Soap, we don't need that. In places like Vancouver, they do because they get Chuckles the Clown and hundreds of names on the ballot, and so some areas have to do that to discourage frivolous nominations on. So, yeah. So good work there, Bruce, and one more thing. And just for clarification, okay. just to your stance, I have a question. It's actually no local government that comes in the city by a four-year term. So a district can't opt out of the four-year term even if they want yeah. to. So that's what it's going to be All those in favor? Very. Thank you. Um, next item is banking services, and we're going to have to defer that. And the reason for that is that with two trustees away, um, I happen to be um, chair of the credit union, and so that puts me in a conflict of interest, so I would have to leave the room, and then we don't have a quorum. And so this uh, this motion will just be uh, moved forward to the next meeting, but it's going to still be in a conflict and still leave the room. Yeah, I have to share in the credit union business. No, no, you're, you're fine. You're fine. I guess you're ready. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, we go to uh, correspondence. And the first item is the uh, British Columbia School Trustees Association Back to School Action Plan. And that was uh, put together and circulated um, earlier in the summer. And basically, um, what the BCSDA is basically. Uh, coming up with an action plan that strongly encourages having schools open on September 2nd. Um, and just if you look through the actions, uh, some of the things that BCSA has done is they have the trustee representatives um, bargaining table um, work towards a negotiated settlement falls within the economic mandate set by the provincial government and makes improvements to class size and composition. So we have continually called for, right now there's a learning improvement fund in BCTF as a um, um, proposed a similar, a learning, similar to a learning improvement fund, and what we've called on is for increased money to go into that um, that particular area. The BCSDA advocates that all savings resulting from the strike and lockout stay within the public school system to benefit students. Um, BCSDA uh, ensures that both member boards are kept informed, and so. Throughout the summer, there's been regular conference calls with um, BCPC, with the BCSDA Bargaining Advisory Committee, the Bargaining uh, Committee, 
and board chairs. Uh, BCSD was um, involved with the recent uh, Parent Advisory Council and has uh, forwarded information to them. Uh, worked with the First Nations Education Steering Committee um, to advance this action plan by advocacy to government and raising public awareness through general social media. Um, continuing discussions with the uh, co governance relationship with the Ministry of Education. And uh, later on, um, after the current round of the parking with the UCCF is concluded, um, the expectation is to work uh, uh, with all the partners towards a new bargaining structure, um, which would likely um, be reflected in legislation next spring. So that's the BCSTA um, action plan. It was circulated to boards. It has received uh, widespread uh, support from boards, and it's there sort of for us as information. Yes, Jeff? This, this came out since our last meeting. Yes. So we can send an entire support? Yes, also. absolutely. So you would move? I don't even want to send a support okay. to all the parties involved in the market. Okay. Seconder? Discussion? Um, so just on this, um, we'll have the vote, and then I'd just like to add a few comments about where things are at right now in terms of bargaining and mediation. But if there's no further discussion on this motion, all those in favor, so support the BCSC Action Plan. Thank you. So there's been a lot of discussion as to where are things um, right now, and so there's been a lot of things that have happened in the last week. Um, the two parties that are involved, um, BCPC is basically uh, under the control of government direction, and government um, has uh, sort of flexibility in terms of their processes to make changes to the bargaining mandate um, at pretty well any time. Um, the BCTF structure calls for the representative assembly to make changes to the bargaining direction. And so the BCTF held a representative assembly in Kamloops on August 23rd and 24th, and at that time they would have had the opportunity to either um, change in some ways their bargaining direction or reinforce the bargaining direction they had. Then on Monday, uh, Vince Reddy, and I should, um, we passed out um, uh, sort of a media release from uh, BCPC and the BCTF, and as you can see, it's word for word the same release. It was agreed upon, and what basically um, the situation is that both parties um, asked uh, Vince Reddy to take control of the mediation process, and, and that is what has happened. And so, um, Justice Keller met with the parties at the beginning of July, um, but he has a, sort of a full-time job as a Supreme Court Justice, and so his schedule didn't allow for him to continue. This is Vince Reddy's work, and so he sort of um, took over, and Vince is, um, at this point, in charge of mediation negotiation, and he will make the decisions as to when the next step takes place. So what has happened this week since the BCTF held the representative assembly on the weekend is Vince met with uh, Peter Cameron, the chief negotiator for BCPC on Monday. He met with Jim Eicher yesterday afternoon. And then this afternoon, uh, Minister Peter Fassbender, president of BCF, Jim Eicher, and Peter Cameron, chief negotiator, uh, met in Victoria. Um, and then from there, they will report to Vince Reddy how the uh, discussions in Victoria went, and then Vince will make the call for how things transpire from there. So this is, um, the direction is from Vince, and um, when he believes that uh, uh, mediation would be productive, he will call the parties together, um, and that's where it sits right now. Okay. So that's um, sort of the update. Um, uh, maybe at this point, just adding the correspondence is the, I'll, I'll skip the order, so we'll go to C, and this is a letter that uh, just circulated that came from the BCSD, and that came out today, and the BCS, BCSD is again um, strongly stating the concerns that uh, school trustees across BC want our schools open and ready for students on September 2nd, and if you look at the second paragraph, um, very strongly told the Ministry of Education and Finance that the $40 per day subsidy for parents would be better spent on students in schools. And in the third paragraph, uh, the final sentence is that uh, strong encouragement of BCTF's overall compensation proposal needs to be aligned with other BC public sector agreements. And so the position of BCTF again is um, 
uh, government of the BCTF must move a number of students first and um, get the school board on September 2nd. So that was something that was just put out by BC school trustees today. The next item is the news release, and we've already talked about that was the August 19th one called the New Early Year Center, and you can see where Revelstoke is um, listed as one of the 12. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but there's over 50 applications, and so we're very honored to be um, accepted there. So that um, brings us to the conclusion of the agenda, and again, recognizing the um, times that we're in, um, I would like to open it up if anybody does have any questions about anything that has been discussed on the agenda. If anybody has any questions like that. I got that here. Yes? Yes, yeah, for you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I have a couple. Sure. Um, one is about the like I've seen your report that you went over the contract with Côte uh, des Glaciers. Have, have they've requested release of a third classroom? Has that been granted? Okay. So, yeah. Well, yes, we should. Uh, I think the, int the intention now would be to speak your, your attending discussion regarding teacher bargaining. No, no, anything yeah. on the agenda. Yeah, right. they'll, they'll, well, I'm starting so, at the beginning. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> okay. Good for you. so um, the reason that didn't come up is that came up at a finance and facilities agenda today, which doesn't go on to the next board meeting, but the simple answer is yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and uh, then I wanted to know just a clarification at Mountain View, though the, the playground and the playing fields are included in a city plan of how much parkland we have as a percent of the city limits. And I know we're at a minimum right now, so that is definitely the park and the playground will be kept as those two things? No. Not at all. They're we, being sold we, for development and they're not being kept as the green space? There, there's, a, there's a green space that we are putting into the plan uh, with our with an arrangement with the city, but but uh, in terms of in terms of the actual disposition of the of the property, the soccer field and that playground. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, that's that's our our work for the school district is to or for the Ministry of Education and as part of our partnership was to provide was to was to sell the property. Okay. With no not, not not to turn it over to the city for it. We, we we wouldn't be able to turn it over to the city to say we'd like you to use it as green space. We sell it. No, it's their problem. Not we, yours. Just we, we, would, we would certainly sell it to the city for a screen space. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, then I'm going to just ask them. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. Um. All the stuff at Mountain View that it's soon to be handed over to the contractors to deal with. Will the teachers get to go through there? There's so many books. I'm just curious if we'll get a chance to look at those. Uh, no, not not in, not as a as a wide open. Yeah. But what the principals know, and, and actually you, you you've been working with the thing to do that. Yeah. Um, was to have a look. The, the the work that was done when the school closed mm -hmm. uh, it included uh, Jane Jane Morris yeah. provided that 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 big cycle for, <coughs> for like what do we actually want out of there? <coughs> so aside from that one set of textbooks that you found, I, I was I was surprised there was anything in there because because everybody had been through. But but had but had were you aware of something else that was in there? Well, I just it's been through. I just looked at the novel sets and I took what I needed and I'm I'm sure my colleagues their novel sets in there because we we haven't had we haven't purchased yeah. new novel sets and there's For sure. books from the library that are novels and some of them are quite yeah. new. I was surprised. Yeah. You know, like there are decent there are decent books in there. Yeah. And we don't and, really have a budget you, and, for that. Yeah, and, and you saw, so it's been a while since anybody had been in there, so mm -hmm. probably at the time when we were going through, probably thinking, I got, we've got this, we got this, and so it, it, absolutely we can go back through there. Okay. Yeah. Right. I, Just so it would save us money. And we coordinate, yeah, we don't want to be throwing away anything we want for sure. Yeah, and I'd like to appreciate it in terms of study carols and things that two yeah. years ago we didn't think we wanted, but in the two years subsequent, people are saying, oh, if I only had this. So, you know. Yeah, and they're in good shape. We spoke, and we uh, came up with the principals meeting today, and you address that for your principal. Okay. And yeah, sure. as Bruce pointed out with the, um, you know, when everybody's moving new into RSS and maybe view, the thinking is we don't need any of this old stuff, but now that you've been there for a while, you might say, actually, yeah, we could use We some were told we stuff. couldn't bring anything, okay. in fact. So. Okay. So that could be yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, Alan, maybe you'll know the answer to this. It's, uh, in this trustee letter they talk about they want the money to roll back into the lift fund? Yes. Will any of that be considered for, for things like that 10% that was taken from us, that some or all of that would come back to? That would be a government decision. At this point, government 
the government decision is from September 2nd going forward, if the strike is still on, that any money coming from the strike savings would go $40 a day towards eligible uh, parents and students. That's a government decision. And what BC school trustees are saying is, we don't agree with that. We believe it should be going into resources for class size and composition. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, do you have anything to say about the caveat that we still have to, the teachers still have to ignore the Supreme Court decision to sit back down to bargaining table? There's no caveat like that. Well, that both parties can opt out of the Supreme Court decision if they don't like it. That's been taken off the table. That's taken off the yes, table. Yes, it was. When, you know? Um, August 8th. Okay. And um, Jim Iker is fully aware that that's, and, and just on that, I, I, was, I was party to discussions that took place at the time, and the thinking was that this would be something that the BCTF would like, because if we looked at, let's say for argument's sake, a five-year contract, and in year two or three, the Supreme Court decision comes down, and it's in favor of one party or the other, it will be, it'll be in favor of one party or the other, mm -hmm. the thinking was that, let's say for example, it's in favor of the uh, government, then the BC, or is in favor of the BCTF, let's say, then what the BCTF would want to do is um, say, well, forget this interim stuff, we want to implement that now. Mm -hmm. And so the actual intent of putting that in was to give both parties the flexibility. And then the BCTF uh, said, no, we don't want that, and so it was withdrawn. And was it replaced with something else? No, no. What's, what's, what's on the table right now is um, there's, from the BCPC perspective, is the Learning Improvement Fund, and um, with money that will increase over the life of the contract, and the BCTF has two proposals. One, to address class size and composition, which comes to $225 million. And then the other is also $225 million. At the end of five years, it gradually is spaced in, and that's to address the grievances from the 2002 period going forward. So there is no caveat uh, about the Supreme Court decision. What the parties have said is, you know, that, let's try to put that aside because that, you know, instead of speculating about what might happen and what we should do, put it aside. And so that's where it's at right now. And what happens October 6th exactly? Is that when? What happens on October 6th is when the legislature is back in session. Mm -hmm. And so there's been, and this is all where people, and it's people, it could be media people, um, newscasters, it could be members of the BCTF, it could be members of government. Everybody starts speculating what are important dates. Mm -hmm. And so what important dates, all they mean is that you've heard the minister say, we are not going to call the legislature back, mm -hmm. we are not going to legislate an agreement. Mm -hmm. And so then some people start speculating, well, they're not going to call the legislature back. They do come back anyway for regular business on October 6th. So the earliest they could pass legislation would be October 6th, and then it would take three days to... But there's no enact. plan for that there's first no day plan. of the legislature. No plan. The legislature's coming back October yes, 6th. But that's all nothing that that with, date means to you? Nothing to do with this. Okay. Now, having said that, I'm not government. And so that's all I can go by is what I know. Mm -hmm. And so what I have heard is the minister say very clearly, and other people in government, that they do not want or intend to legislate and that there's no intent to bring the legislature back early, and that the legislature does come back in session on October 6th. Those are just factual information. Yeah. What happens, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Yes, two. You opened up the meeting to public questions, mm -hmm. and is that going to be a regular occurrence now, or is that just for We'll have to meeting? talk that as a, about that as a group, and, and what we did is we had our meeting in July, and and what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to do is be respectful of the situation we're in, where this is unusual times, right. there's a lot of uncertainty, and so um, where I can go back a number of years, and the reason we got out of that practice is that, um, you know, being supposed to be related to items that are on the agenda, Correct. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely uh, something that we will need to revisit as to, should this be part of our regular meetings? But opening the meeting to just general questions. At the conclusion. At yes. the conclusion, yes. 
we could expect to ask questions at any meeting? That's, that's, what, what, we'll to, that's what we'll have to talk yeah. about as a group. Okay. What I'm saying is that... This is where I'm confused okay. because of why wouldn't the public be able to ask questions? Yeah. Can, I, can I just say a, a, a quick comment about that? I, I really appreciate the ability to answer some questions. I also r recognize that uh, Sarah's questions were really specific to Sarah. And so... No, to the all, agenda. Oh, yeah, to the agenda, <laughs> totally. But, but of, import, of import to you. So what I would see happening if we... If, if, uh, is it the same kind of question that Sarah could ask me at any time? With no disrespect to Sarah's question, we asked if you'd like to ask right. questions about the agenda. And, and the, the, what we'd have to discuss is is what would be our, our capacity for this group to, to have, take the time to answer if we had 25 people here with all their own individual questions that were important to them that could really be answered with a phone call or, a, or a, with a phone call or a, an email. So, uh, as opposed to being able to open it now because I, I, with this Alan's opening beginning to say, this is, these, we are respectful, these are different times right now. Now up until this past board meeting, we don't really have very many guests here. We, you've been to some and you would know that there are not Never read really guests here. Right. Fair to say, That's what fair, I'm asking. Fair, fair to say we've never been in the situation. So what Alan's saying, I think, is at least we, we'd have to consider what kind of questions would we, would, what kind of dialogue would be useful for people who are attending, um, as opposed to, uh, as opposed to. But so, I would expect yeah. that they would be related to items Absolutely. on the agenda. That's for sure. So that's course. that's something we have to decide as a group. All I'm saying is that the last two meetings. In July, we had a large delegation from the Revelstoke Teachers Association. Yes, I saw that. And so that. what we said is that anybody who wanted to could speak or ask questions, no time limits. And again, respecting that this is a very challenging situation we're all in, yeah. I respect that we're still in that same situation today. Right. And so that's why I suggest that we change that. And and what I've said is that as a group, we will discuss the board. Yeah, we probably should do this on a regular basis. Okay. Okay. No, I'm just yeah, no, but to be fair, City Council, you can't ask a question. Yeah. So and, it's and not just, unusual. And, and not I, to I, this is probably not the time to get into debate because the. Um, no, no, you uh, have to discuss that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I get it. Just curious. Sure. <laughs> okay. Because you've never made it official that we could ask questions. We, we, we still haven't. We, we haven't had the benefit of having people at our meetings before. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, with the exception of one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and David, but David never a asked member it. of the public. No, it's not true. He's asking. Well, sometimes I do, but I, yes. I don't ask it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. usually, yeah. 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 usually, what happens with the media is that after we adjourn, then I'll walk over to David and Alex and then we'll have some questions yeah. back and forth, but not part of the. But I understand that's different as opposed to yeah. a member of the public yeah. who has a question related to yeah. something in okay. the agenda. Okay. Was there anything else? In the if not, could I have a motion to move in camera? What are you guys saying? Elmer, second by Jeff.